The uh, Green Party member, who was the farmer, mentioned to me, look at this land. And I was remarking at the beautiful landscape. And he said, look at this land. It's been good to us for 3,000 years. We have to protect it. Mm. That's exactly what Ida B. Wells is saying in this quote. Are you surprised that a lot of people, 2009, don't know about Ida B. Wells? And I'm asking that because um, we were talking off camera um, about this new thing that they're trying to do in the great state of Texas, which is to change the curriculum and pull out of the curriculum references to Thurgood Marshall, references to uh, Cesar Chavez, and then um, fill those textbooks with references to Newt Gingrich and uh, Phyllis Schlafly and other right-wing heroes, Jerry Farwell and the Moral Majority, and this is required, you know, for you to graduate. And here we have Ida B. Wells, and we have people that don't remember what she's about. What's your thoughts on that, and how should we be looking at that in Texas? Look, um, the problem is not just Texas. The problem is all across our country. The attempt to erase our memory, to destroy our memory, and that memory also includes a valiant struggle of resistance against oppression. So um, I was uh, shocked, but then again, I, I can't afford to be shocked because these things happen. A young woman called into a radio station and complained that her daughter didn't know who Martin Luther King Jr. was. This is a black woman. And this is the 21st century. So um, we have to be the writers of our story and we have to remember our history. We need more history majors, in fact. We need more people who chronicle our history. And of course, thank goodness that the organizers in Texas did so of the Women's Museum, such that a quote from Ida B. Wells could be remembered and celebrated by all. And for the record, who is Ida B. Wells? Ida B. Wells was one of those stalwart women who uh, fought for our freedom when it wasn't very popular to fight for freedom and it wasn't popular to uh, be a woman fighting for freedom, as it sometimes isn't today. One of the important things is going back to so. when you were a congresswoman, was that you were very adamant and very diligent about going in and bringing out those Freedom of Information papers and finding out what was going on with COINTELPRO and all those different types of things on the J. Edgar Hoover. And, and is there a connection to the type of strategy that they were employing when they were trying to undermine a lot of those groups, those civil rights groups from the Black Panthers to Martin Luther King? Did they have as a plan to really downplay that history? Because we don't read about the Panthers and we only know about Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech but we don't know about him standing up against the war in Vietnam. And we don't hear about Paul Robinson. We don't know about Mickey Leland. We hardly hear anything about Barbara Jordan, except she might have a you know, school named after her, but there's no depth being shown uh, uh, on, on their life. David D., I really did intend to uh, mention COINTELPRO and the counterintelligence program um, when you mentioned the effort to change the curriculum in schools to reflect the heroism of Newt Gingrich and company and uh, erase that of uh, Thurgood Marshall, etc. And um, uh, thank goodness you know your history very well and you also know that point number five on the original founding COINTELPRO document which was drafted by the FBI um, stated that there must be a method by which they could deny young blacks the opportunity to adhere to a black nationalist ideology. Well, if you don't know your history and you don't know about black achievements in the past, then um, you won't uh, uh, adhere to them 
because there's nothing in your mind to adhere to. So I do view what is happening as part of, it, of a continuum of things that the federal government in the late 1960s actually decided to write down. There's been another interesting um, development with respect to the Georgia Green Party that we just found out and I am in the process of contacting friends at the ACLU to assist with this, but the 21st century FBI has decided that the Georgia Green Party is a uh, terrorist organization. Now, that then means... The Green Party, but you all stand for peace, isn't that all in your document, peace and green living and... Well, maybe what it means is that because we stand for peace, those who don't want peace can terrorize us because that's exactly what I believe that you have to have certain designation in order to kick in other things that could be of the surveillance type. And without the designation, then the surveillance is illegal, even within this uh, realm of Patriot Act that we live in today. So um, this is a very, very dangerous development because the Green Party is a political party. And if there is an effort to deny people in the United States the opportunity to, to have their fullest political expression, peaceful political expression, um, with these designations and then to do the kinds of activities that flow from these designations, that is a serious infringement on the rights of Americans, not only for freedom of speech, freedom of thought, and freedom of political behavior. But it also implies that people like yourself, Ralph Nader, you know, or Matt Gonzalez, and a number of other people, Rosa Clemente, and I mean, we can go down a list of people that have run as, you know, in this third party in the United States, are somehow terrorists. Well, what it means is that they're afraid of us. Mm. And they're afraid of our ideas. They're afraid of the fact that we have the the truth, we have the uh, valued position that is valued by the majority of people in this country, um, but um, they're afraid that we might get the support that we're actually due.